Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one today is 25th day of February, being Friday, and week seven, in that time of the church calendar, year she. Our readings will be coming from Epistle of James, chapter 5, verse 9 to 12. Our response to Psalm will come from Psalm 103, verse 8a. Our gospel message will come from Mark Gospel chapter 10, verse 1 to 12. The theme of our message today is steadfastness. Be steadfast in life, in what you are doing. In God, in your relationship with people, and in yourself. St that is stability in life. And that's why today you can see Jesus was teaching as usual to the crowd about the kingdom of God. And some Pharisees came to test him and asked him a question. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he asked them, what did Moses give you as a command? What did Moses command you to do? He said, Moses told us to write a written certificate and divorce the wife, our wives. And Jesus told them, Moses did that because your, your hardness of heart. It's not normal. God created them from beginning male and female. And that's why a man will leave his father and mother and join to the wife and they become one flesh. No more two. And there's nothing like divorcing your wife there. It's one man, one woman. And what God has joined together, man should not put asunder. So it made them to know that marriage entails steadfastness. You don't marry a woman to divorce. You don't marry a man to divorce him. You marry a man for life. And both of you become one. When you are one, there is no question of disintegration. You are united in one. You are steadfastness in your relationship. Steadfastness in living together. Steadfastness in union with God. So that steadfastness is what makes marriage really true. And make it real. But when there is instability in marriage, there is already a crisis automatically. The family cannot stand. So steadfastness is one of the major characters of the family life. And steadfastness towards your wife and steadfastness towards your husband is one of the main characters of relationship in marriage. And it is that steadfastness that you become one. Anything short of that becomes a deceit. You have been carried about by any type of breeze. Any wind can carry you people about. But when you are steadfast on each other, you remain stable in face of trials and crises. You remain stable. Now what steadfastness about marriage means all about. But when the disciples got to the room, they asked Jesus about this. And Jesus told them, if you divorce your wife, you make him an adulterer. And then person who marries her commits adultery with her. And if you marry another person, you will commit adultery yourself against your wife. So it's no question of division at all. There is no provision for divorce. Moses allowed you because you have stiff hardness of heart. Unte you're unteachable. And because you're not stable, that's why he allowed you. Go it your way, but not the word of God. So to be in God is to be steadfast. God is stable, unchanging God. When you are in him, you are unchanging too. And that's why today, so James has to tell us, tell us more about steadfastness. He said, do not grumble, brethren, against one another. When you grumble against one another, you may be judged. Behold, the judge is already standing by. At the door, yes. 
Grumbling means there is instability among, there is no steadfastness among you. He says an example of suffering and patience. Brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord before. What the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord? What they are, see their sufferings, see their patience, and they remain steadfast in face of all the suffering. They remain stable. In face of the persecution they underwent, they remain stable. In face of the hunger, instead of many things they went through, they remain stable. A steadfastness in faith in God. That what James is telling us, we should learn from them. He said, Behold, we call those happy who were steadfast. The people you call happy people are people who are steadfast. The people who are not unhappy, who are unhappy people today are not people who are not steadfast. But people who are steadfast are the people who are called happy. Are happy people. When you are steadfast in your life, you're a happy person. When you stay happy in your, you stay fast in your marriage, you're a happy family. When you stay, fa stay, stay fast in your relationship with God, you're a happy man. Likewise with others. He said, that's it. That God happy. He said, you have heard about the steadfastness of Job. You have read about the steadfastness of Job. In face of all the trials, losing all his children, losing all his property, Job will remain stable. Steadfast in God and never want to give up. In face of all the threat and sickness, Job remains steadfast in God. My Redeemer, I leave it. And I will see him face to face. You can see the purpose of being stable, the need to be stable. You have seen the purpose of our Lord Jesus Christ. How the Lord is compassionate and merciful. It was his steadfastness that made him be compassionate in face of our inadequacy. To show us mercy in face of our disobedience. His steadfastness cannot change. He is man good. There are no evil in him. So look at his purpose. So be steadfastness, steadfast. And that's why he said, don't swear at all, either for, for he swear with heaven or earth, or any other oath. To swear it means you are not steadfast. Steadfastness is that your yes is yes, your no is no. There are no correlation between them. So to take an oath, swear an oath, it means you are not steadfast. So God is telling us about the need to be steadfast in our relationship, in our thoughts, in our words and our actions, and our relationship with God and men. Remain steadfast. Don't be changing like the Naira. If you swear an oath, you fall under condemnation. Anything less than yes or no, you fall under condemnation because you miss you, you have declared you are not stable, steadfast. So steadfastness, that somebody is a stable character, that somebody is a this and that, depends on his steadfastness. You are known for that. But when you are not steadfast, no person knows you for what you become a hypocrite. You become a chameleon. You change with weather and change with death and time. And now what the psalmist who understood the, the need for us to see the need for being steadfast, tell us that God, the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Our Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's compassionate in steadfastness. He's gracious in steadfastness. And we should learn from him to be compassionate and steadfast. In steadfastness and gracious to in steadfastness. That makes a better personality. May God help us that sadly need to be steadfast in all our deeds. I should be in union with God, who is a, a steadfast God. And people serving have to be steadfast too. May God help us understand this today through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. I will be steadfast in our married life, in our relationship with God, in our relationship with people, in our relationship, in our mood of living and thoughts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all.
Bitte, ja, no, ja, ja, no,